Nah, that was just clickbait. But, because I hate clickbait, I will use this hammer and chisel to destroy this smartphone for your viewing pleasure. Three, two, one, go! With that out of our system, it's time to get back to the actual topic of this video, and that is engine braking. Now, if you're watching this video, uh, I assume you already know about the two main approaches to engine braking, which is hard braking and easy braking. Now, I won't go too deep into, you know, into, these, into these two approaches. There's a lot of material online and you can do all the research you want. I will just sum them up, you know, one, in one sentence, which is, you know, hard braking, uh, what it basically is about, it's saying that in order to properly brake in an engine, you need to use the full extent of its power during the first few miles of its operation. Why do you need to do that? Uh, you need to use the full extent of its power to create enough pressure to seat the rings you know, inside the cylinder bores. Uh, so your engine creates you know, perfect compression and is working at its you know, optimum operating, whatever, you get it. Now, the easy braking approach says uh, you should not use the full extent of your, your engine's power until the engine is broken in, which is usually 800 miles, 1,000 miles, you know, whatever. It depends on the manufacturer. Uh, what's the argument behind it? Uh, there are imperfections in the machining, you know, of the engine, in the bores, in the rings, in the whatever. These imperfections, uh, when, you know, exposed to uh, certain temperatures, uh, can create hot spots. These hot spots can create, you know, pre-detonation or whatever and cause engine damage. So that's it when it comes to the two approaches. Now, uh, back when I rebuilt my engine and spent my hard-earned money into rebuilding the engine, like, uh, you know, any reasonable human being, I wanted what is best for my engine. And being new to the whole brain-in thing, I honestly saw, you know, valid arguments in both sides and I had no idea, you know, which approach to take. So, how do I approach? Uh, how did I approach deciding on on whether I should go with the hard braking or with the easy braking? Is that I thought the best, you know, possible, the most logical way is to talk with people that deal with a lot of engines, that actually rebuild engines, that you know uh, have dynos and see engines, you know, being either broken in on the dyno or see them tested, and you know, see how new engines perform, you know, in different kinds of situations. So, after talking to, you know, as much of, you know, engine rebuilders, builders as I could, you know, both online and live, and, you know, being pretty annoying and asking a lot of questions, uh, I did actually decide to go for the hard braking. Now, uh, why did I decide that? Uh, the reasons behind my decision actually can be summed up in and maybe a couple of sentences. Now, uh, number one, the people that own dynos have told me that of all the engines, the freshly rebuilt engines that they have seen, you know, fail, blow up on the dyno or whatever, not a single one of these engines has blown, uh, you know, or failed because of a machining imperfection that created hot spots or whatever. Each of these engines has failed because of human error. And the most, you know, common cases are either improper bearing tolerances, which caused a spun bearing, caused a rod knock, you know, stuff like that, or oil starvation, which caused all sorts of failure. You know, we all know how engines run without oil. They don't. That's the argument number one. Makes sense. Argument number two. If you actually look at footage from car factories, you know, and motorcycle factories around the world. You can see those on shows like, you know, how do they do it or stuff like that. When you have a little documentary about the production process of a car, 
its engine or a motorcycle and its engine and you can see that each new engine when the you know manufacturer tests it right after it, it gets off the production line you know the engine is floored the full extent of its power is used to test and see how the engine is up how it works you know if it's good and to see whether um, you know you get it sorry so uh, what does that tell us is that number one manufacturers are confident in their engine assembly process and they are aware of the fact that proper tolerances and a properly assemb assembled engine can take the full extent of full extent of its power because that's what it's meant to do and it also tells us that they know an engine that fails when it's you know when it's driven at full power was meant to fail anyway and this is what the argument actually boils down to an engine that fails no matter how early in its life you know because it's driven you know at full throttle was an engine that's going to fail anyway so there was that was an engine that you were going to rebuild either in 500 miles or 1500 miles it doesn't matter no amount of easy braking can correct an imperfection that is big enough to to cause problems to the engine actually to make the engine fail and no amount of hard braking can make an imperf a machining imperfection you know sufficiently problematic to make the engine fail so that's pretty much it when it comes you know to the whole engine debate from my side so what i want to show you now is the actual braking procedure step by step and how to do it Okay, good engine braking actually starts before you turn the key. It starts during the engine assembly with assembly loop. Now, you apply assembly loop to all rotating parts where lubrication is critical, especially during those first few seconds before engine oil reaches these parts. Now, in case something is wrong with your engine and there is no oil pressure, assembly loop will give you a bigger margin of error to turn off the engine and, you know, stop any, any damage. Now, some people may say that you do not need assembly lube. That may be true if you are assembling the engine on Monday and installing and firing it up, you know, on Tuesday. But life is full of unexpected things and assembly lube is not expensive and it can't hurt anything. So I definitely, definitely recommend it. Uh, another good idea is to open up your oil pump and lube up the gears of the oil pump to help them stay lubricated during those first critical, you know, critical first seconds of engine operation. After you have put together your engine, it's time to fill it up with oil. Now, most engine builders recommend mineral instead of synthetic oil, so I recommend sticking with that. Another thing that is a good idea to get is a magnetic sump bolt. Now, this thing will help pick up the tiny metal particles that end up in the oil as a result of the braking. A magnetic sump bolt will help you monitor how well your engine is doing and to see if there is anything you need to be concerned about. Now, these things are definitely cheap and you can get them anywhere and it's another thing I I recommend to give you, you know, better insight into the health of your engine. It definitely can save your engine or do miracles, but it's, you know, a great way to look, you know, into how your engine is doing without, you know, actually having to open it up. Open it up. Right after this, it's time to fire up your engine for the first time. Now, firing up your engine for the first time is a two-person job. One person should look for leaks and other problems with the engine, while the other person should keep the revolutions between 2000 and 3000 for about 15 minutes. Now this is critical for bedding in of new cams, because it makes sure everything gets to operating temperature, and keeping the revs between 2000 and 3000 uh, provides sufficient oil pressure for everything to get oiled up properly, you know, and, and broken in properly. Okay, right after you have done this, drain the oil and use the opportunity to see how your engine is doing by checking out the magnetic sump plug uh, we installed earlier. Now there will likely be some fuzz on your magnetic sump bolt but don't let that concern you before you actually read the fuzz. Now I know this may sound kind of weird but reading the fuzz is easy because all you have to do is smear it between your fingers. Now if you can't feel any hard particles between your fingers you are good. Uh, it should feel like a sort of cream or, or gray grease between your fingers so nothing you must not feel anything hard uh, another great way of seeing uh, uh, how your freshly rebuilt engine is doing is to take a, lo a look at the interior of your oil filter 
how do you do how do you do this of course first drain all the excess oil from your oil filter and cut it open you can do this easily with an angle grinder with an angle grinder now uh, after this you you split apart the oil filter and take a nice look between the pleats of the oil filter and again you are doing the same thing as with the magnetic sump plug you are trying to find any hard particles that are visible to the naked eye inside your oil filter as long as the pleats are clean and there's nothing you know big and hard you are definitely on the good side and your engine is doing doing well okay now once you have refilled your engine with fresh oil it's time to take that controversial first drive now there are two things you have to make sure of and the number one is that your engine is fully warmed up and number two is that you're in a nice pretty much straight road where you can develop reasonable speeds uh, now don't think hard braking means trashing the engine and driving it like a maniac that is not true hard braking is a methodical rational systematic approach to braking in your engine what you will do is gradually increase the throttle until you reach full throttle once you have reached sufficiently high IPMs or you have reached the limits of the speed that you can develop on the road you are on you are going to let go of the throttle and you are going to let go of the throttle completely and decisively without changing gear that's pretty much it all you have to do is repeat this step in second third and fourth gears approximately four to five times in each gear now make sure to drive safely while you are doing this after you have done this you can pretty much consider your engine to be broken in and you can drive it you know any way you like uh, the only other thing that you should take care of is to change the oil frequently which means change it at least every 120 miles or so until you have reached 700 or maybe 800 miles. So. That's it when it comes to engine braking. Now I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope uh, I have managed to clarify some things when it comes to engine braking. Uh, I also hope uh, this video will help you make the right decision when it comes to braking in your engine. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more. And if you really liked it, uh, you can actually tip me and it's 100% free to see how, go to description. See ya.